The new legendary Pokemon Terrapagos has been here the whole time. I'm not even kidding. It's legitimately the map. We have so much to talk about. Let's break it down for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. All right, so y'all thought I might have been memeing, but I'm not. Centro and many others have reported on the fact that Terrapagos, the brand new legendary Pokemon as part of our second DLC later this year, is indeed the entire map of the Paldea region. And now everything makes so much sense. Or does it? <laughs> no, but for real, you can see that uh, some people have kind of drawn out the different parts of Paldea and what Terrapagos looks like and kind of how it all ties together. And I don't think there's any way in the world that you're doubting the fact that Paldea's entire region is based on this turtle and this whole concept of the world turtle, which we've been talking about for months, it seems. It seems as though Terrapagos is really that, right? Like this is, we're like basically on top of this Pokemon's back, it seems, or something like that when we're in the Paldea region. This is gonna be wild. I'm really excited to see how this kind of develops out in terms of just like lore and ideas and like what they're gonna bring to the table with this. I feel like this is really cool. I hope you guys think it's as cool as I do because I think it's dope. Further, Light actually reports on saying this is the shield of Galapagos located in the center of Spain. Curious, huh? Like zero air area zero in Paldea, its symbol is two turtles and a cane. The guardian of the zero zone is this disc Pokemon will be revealed in the DLC. So really, really cool. And we look at kind of Spain, which is what Paldea is based off of. You've got this idea that you've got the shield of Galapagos located in the center of Spain. Again, a lot of like tying parts. And I gotta stop and say like for a second, you know, obviously I'm working on my own game. You guys know Elastrals, you can see all the stuff in my room. And you know, we, we dive into different ideas and concepts and stuff to create new creatures and some of the lore as we're building this out. But I think it's so impressive how deep some of these concepts go for Pokemon. And it's something that I, I think we can stop and appreciate. And I, you know, when I think of this, I think of uh, Skeledurge is another one, Foycoco's evolution, how much went into that, even though it's not like my favorite design per se, the lot went into like that design when you really dive into like the pieces of what Skeledurge actually is like with the stadium and the music aspect and there's so many different pieces of it so just really big kudos to that i think that's super cool one thing a lot of people are talking about right now about terrapagos is that we're never getting another pokemon type because we can see his back and you can actually determine that all of the types are on there and for a couple generations now people have been asking for new types to be added to the game but i've always kind of been someone who's like eh, i don't really think we should add new types because we kind of have a pretty balanced type chart as it is you can maybe make some tweaks like they did in Scarlet and Violet with things like Snow and Hail. But generally speaking, I don't really know where you go from here with a type. And most people are like, space type, cosmic type, but I don't think that that's really advantageous. Um, when you think of the types being added, like Dark and Steel, they were added as a way to counter Psychic, which was insane at the time, right? Like that was a, a really big pur purpose for that. Justice Fairy was added as a way to kind of check Dragon. So while... It's unlikely we ever get another type. I don't think Terrapagos means that we're never getting another type. There's plates on his on his belly, as Soul Silver points out. Those could be filled with new types. I don't think this means anything in terms of the future of types, but I don't think we're getting new types anyway. So, and obviously, if you haven't recognized, Terrapagos has all the types on his back, and then kind of like the Terra icon in the middle, which again points right towards the map. It's just so cool, dude. I just feel like that's such a cool little connection. I talked about some of the new Pokemon. We've got kind of uh, Ogie Dogi and, uh, you know, I'm not going to remember their names right now, the Fezendipity. Um, so that was coming from a Japanese fairy tale called Momotaro, uh, which is like a little boy who travels with these three uh, creatures. Um, Soul Silver reports on the fact that the Indigo Disc is almost certainly based on the Japanese fairy tale Arashima Taro. It's a turtle depicted like Terrapagos, and it takes the protagonist to the palace of the dragon sea god, which is deep under the sea. There's so many connections to Scarlet and Violet, especially the theme of time and dreams. The moral, the characters, the plot, all of this could be part of the DLC plot. So this is something that we're probably going to dive in a little bit more. So Silver kind of giving us the surface level kind of understanding of it. But we're definitely going to look into that more as the community explores this idea. Celebrating Pokemon Day, obviously a good time. If you haven't yet, you can check out my store, TeamShiny.com. and pick up some sweet merch. Pick up your favorite shiny designs over there at TeamShiny.com. And you can check out the link in the description. We've got a ton of different merch, ton of different t-shirts. Deck out your closet. You're going to look awesome. Seriously, you deserve it. When you look in the mirror, you want to see your favorite shiny on your shirt. I'm just saying. So check it out. TeamShiny.com. Amashinu says that the seal of Kitakami City is colored blue and green. And that's one of the DLCs. We're going to Kitakami. Uh, which happens to be the colors of Suicune and Virizion. 
Also happens to be the colors of the brand new uh, Pokemon, the legendaries, right? You've got the green mask, bro. Ogre, Ogre, uh, Ogre Pond, I think it is. And then Terrapagos. So again, lots of really cool themes tying it to the city itself. I thought that was really interesting. Pokesutami, whose posts I love, I love reading Pokesutami's posts, saying that these festival masks are sold at stalls at Matsuri, which is for summer festivals, which is kind of what the DLC is based off of the first one, is this, this these summer festivals. Um, they're popular with kids. The Pikachu and Eevee ones are ones that you can actually get. Kids generally wear them on the side of their head. And it's so funny because I, I feel like I'm not exactly super uh, well rehearsed or knowledgeable in this type of culture or even this idea. And I remember in Arceus, like they released those like Zoroark masks with them like off to the side. And I like didn't really understand why people wore the masks to the side, but it makes sense now. At least there's some little connections forming in my brain that makes some sense about this. So we saw some stuff with the mask. We know that there's this new mask legendary really fitting into these themes and these different kind of ideas. Now this is where we're gonna start to blow your mind. And listen, they do this every single game and it's like, it doesn't make sense until after the fact and it's so funny they legitimately had posters guys for the masked pokemon in scarlet and violet already i'm not even kidding a bunch of people found this this got 700,000 views good go on soul silver i love it there was a poster to the teal mask in scarlet and violet the whole time right in front of our faces lumio's post i guess sent it over to soul silver I love this community, man. I gotta say, like, that's something that I've really grown to appreciate. Just a great community of people sharing information, just trying to enjoy Pokemon. But this mask was straight up on the Treasury Eatery. It's legit right there. It's the same poster that they used. It's got the mask Pokemon on it. It's just so wild that they was sitting right there this whole time. You think to yourself, like, there's no way, and there it is. We saw this a bunch of times, right? Like, there's been tons of teasers to you know, Scarlet and Violet in the past. There's been teasers to all the games, right? They do it every game. This is one of our little Easter eggs we're able to uncover now, which I just find so funny. And then James H on Twitter also calls out that the little thing right next to it, uh, I, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what this says, but it's a series of different characters. And if you actually look at those characters and line them up to the characters on the, the, the different trials in Legends Arceus, like the Cleaver trial, it actually shows those same characters uh, written down the side. I don't know what that means. So maybe this is nothing. This might be a nothing burger, but it is interesting that that all ties together. So I, I definitely feel like that was worth mentioning. From there, Matt DiNardo actually says, it's unlikely, but it gives me hope that we'll see this artwork revealed to be Sunflora's evolution in the DLC. And there it is. It's like this, this poster that you can find in the game and it's Sunflora and it certainly doesn't look like a regular Sunflora. It's definitely a little bit different. So could that be a Sunflora evolution? Probably a stretch, but definitely worth mentioning. And then Matt Yukana actually dug up some DLC textures that weren't scrubbed from version 1.2. Said there wasn't anything super noticeable, but there's a few different textures that we can take a look at here that are just kind of cool to see a little early access to that. But then he goes on to say a follow-up to my last post in the leftover textures. They added in a few in a new tips image that takes place over one of the new areas of the DLC. We can see the same gate and lantern textures here. So um, this, it seems like they kind of just overlaid this background onto the stadium, like in the middle of the, the world. But um, I think, what is it, Mesa Gosa? Um, but I think that that could be like a battle background that we see in the DLC. So, so really cool. Maybe we'll have some more battle backgrounds. They did that for the Sword and Shield DLC, I believe. So that'll be a nice addition for sure. So that's pretty much that, guys. Be sure to check out TeamShiny.com if you want to pick up some sweet merch. And big shout-outs to Terrapagos being the whole region, basically. <laughs> I just find that absolutely insane. And I'm glad we got to uh, take a moment. I feel like a lot of times these videos are just like, here's the news, here's the news. But I wanted to like really just pause and, and just appreciate some of the stuff that Pokemon does because it really is impressive. You know what I mean? Like you would think, right? Like it's almost like the, the, it's the expectation is there because they're the biggest media franchise in the world. But I think it's fun to kind of stop and just appreciate it. I do still think the newest Pokemon, the little Okie Dory, Monkey Dories and stuff, I don't really like those designs at all to me. To, to me, Terrapagos is phenomenal. I'm not feeling any of the other ones. That's just me. Maybe we'll see them in 3D and it'll be a little bit better, but I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.